And now, the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Yeah, bonfire boss pit. Hey, everyone. It's the bonfire. Guess who's Bazak? Dan Soder again. Hey. It's Dan Soder from Guess MTV2 Zach. Guy Court. Yeah, uh, it is the Bonfire, Comedy Central Radio, Series XM95. I'm Big J. Okerson. That is the returning champ, oh, Dan Soder. I love um, go. Dude, yesterday, <laughs> you didn't get to hear the episode yesterday, but I just kept saying, every time I'd say, come back from commercial and say, Dan Soder's not with us today. He's out filming the uh, episode, or he's out filming season three of Billions. Uh, he called us from the set, he says, of the scene where Paul Giamatti dies. That's from the great. Show, <laughs> That's <laughs> great. He kept doing ah. the part where Axe kills himself by jumping out off of Axe Capital. Turns out he owned the, he, Bobby Axelrod owned the Yakuza for Billions. <laughs> and now Dan is starring in a actual side show about the Yakuza. <laughs> Spinoff where Dan fights the Yakuza. It's called Mephi. In Japan. Yeah, Mephi. <laughs> Mephi takes on the Yakuza. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I met someone recently that would only refer to you as Mephi. That uh, sounds like an insult. It was weird. It was, was it, weird. Who, what, was it a comic? I don't remember at all. Because that's some real bullying shit. No, it was more a fan thing. Oh, I thought they were like... I was, you they know, were always referring you only as Mafi. Me and you come from our garbage background. I thought it was like bullying. Oh, hey, Mafi, you're all coming to me, dog. I'm like, what's up? You want to say my? What do you say the character's name again? I take it as such an insult. You coming to me? Uh, uh, what? Bro? Me and Dave uh, did the show yesterday. Dave Smith, of course, who's still number one album on iTunes. He's number three on Billboard. Yeah, number three on, on Billboard. Billboard. Great. It's fucking it's great. That's great. Fantastic, man. Uh, Dave came on. He was shot out of the Libertas. Yesterday. It was great. It was really, he was good. Was he all fired up? He was all fired Well, We had good topics for him yesterday. The political correctness of the stupid fucking Emmys. Oh, that's And, he, that's and we dabbled wheelhouse? a little bit of Kevin Hart, which we're going to come back to today. I want to tell you very much about um, my journey here today and why I really can't catch a break these last few days. Yesterday, you said you didn't listen to the show, so very briefly... Well, because I don't have Sirius XM. In crazy... <laughs> I have to bootleg my own shit. In... Uh, <laughs> While we were in crazy traffic, not realizing that the president was in town, the U.N., and said, all oh, that shit. So it was crazy traffic, especially en route to where we were going. We jumped out of the car, the Uber, and it was a day of like that. Yeah, Dan's right. We should have taken, I guess, the... Team train, bro. should have taken the train today. Mass tra transportation. I'm going to show you in a minute why your loyalty is ill-placed. Oh, no, I know. The MTA is garbage. <laughs> so uh, we jump out. We go, you know what? City bikes. We have the city oh. bike thing, and we go, it's a cool day yesterday. Wouldn't it be nice if we were older? Right. You guys were riding back up to work like what that? What you didn't get the privy to hear on the show is how horrible it is to ride a city bike through midtown city traffic. I came here just eating bus soot. Oh, yeah. And smo it, it, it was Getting smoke inhalation. I mean, it was, uh, I mean, times where, yeah, you like, I like, put my foot out to, like, kick something because I was going to, like, what fall. You, I kill you. Where are you going? Yeah, it, it, it was Horrible oh, ass yeah. crack sweat, ball sweat, dude. Your bike ride. chest and back, yeah. But it wasn't supposed to be. But it was supposed to be leisure. I've ridden from. You thought it was going to be a leisure ride through Midtown. I rode from the stand to the cellar one night, which is a gorgeous walk, a gorgeous walk, and a gorgeous bike ride. It was cool outside, in... wind through the hair, nonstop moving. It's you have to constantly stop when you're in that crazy... It sucked. Yeah, yeah, you're riding a bike through Midtown. That sounds walking through Herald Square as hell. Yeah. I can't imagine riding a bike anywhere near it. This, it, it sucked dick. So here is today... Well, why we, was we it look shut at, down? We look at Uber. Because was what? Because Trump's at the UN? Yeah. I worked uh, when Dos Caminos, when I worked there, the right, right by the right, UN. Right in the heart of the... Uh, That's where the president drives down, yeah, down 50th Street. Yeah, we to see Obama He always goes by, by for that table side walk. He goes, <laughs> he goes, there's that guy still working, still W. He goes, there's that guy still working hard. I'm all, hey, Mr. President. And then Obama came in. I was like, oh, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> Hoping to get out by your second term. So you're doing your uh, president's impressions. This reminded me. I did find and listen to, uh, remember I told you Dan Perlman? Sent me. He recorded a guy one time who came. I talked to a guy. I, I played it a lot this weekend because I was talking to some guys in Calgary, which I had a blast in Calgary, by yeah, the way. Great city. Uh, great city. Great comics I worked with, dude. It was really good. Um, we were. Uh, I was playing this this audio for them that Dan Perlman took years ago of a guy. Because it's one of those great stories of a guy who just comes in 40-something years old to an open mic. to oh, you told so me it's already He comes out of the gates explaining you why he's there and yeah. everything. Yeah. And then he just does a set that's garbage from front to back. And it is... 
Now, I, I, I was trying to tell you I couldn't remember what he said, but now I know like verbatim what he says. He goes, Joe Biden, that motherfucker where he says he switches. Yeah. He does the wrong impression and just says the name of the other person. He goes, Joe Biden with that smile, that joker face looking motherfucker. You know, he comes in with that, uh, huh, 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 huh. it's arithmetic. <laughs> Bill Clinton and shit. <laughs> That's what he said. Oh. He just says the wrong impression and then just says the guy with the impression he did. Bill Clinton and shit. Um, um, so. so I'm back on the bike ride. The bike ride was terrible. Today, I'm looking again. Looks like Trump's in town. Still here. Yeah, Still here. Uh, I looked at the price of the Uber ride and the, and the route, and I'm like, oh, already. They're like, trying to take me all the way to the west to come back over here. I'm like, nope. You know what? I'm going to do Dan Proud right now. And we're leaving early. Again, nice and early. Uh, let's jump on the train. Yeah, we're train. F. Mm. What's the problem? I think you walked to the end. Why? Because the end's right here. It's right by work. The F is, is right in the t- building. Yeah, you're right. No, the F. <laughs> I just realized that. It's inside. I was, as I was making that argument, I was like, oh, God damn it. The F is right in the building. Yeah, your thing's like a grungy steps walk. Yeah. Uh, past that same guy every time that says God bless He's wearing trash bags as clothes, and he says God bless you. I think he's doing pretty well. I think he's all right. He's probably the most pleasant guy I've ever seen. But yeah. And that's why you I know what I'm talking about? That's why I think he's doing well in 49th Street stop. The only guy. Yeah, get plenty to him. Yeah, 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 because he's just pleasant. But he really, yeah, Jacob's but got he really, he doesn't care if it's rush hour or what time. He <laughs> takes up all the space on that on that turn. Jacob, that stairs turn. Basically, is paying Jacob's paying him alimony at this point. That's how much money Jacob gives him. I've seen him not on the stairs one time. He had more springing spring in his step than I did. Really? He <laughs> leapfrogged you? Goes, oh, Jacob, give me money. Woo! God bless. <laughs> hey, thanks, man. God bless. Get the fuck out of my way. I gotta run. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get these stairs and run. So I'm going to take the train. That's responsible. Yeah. We go to the F. I'd go to the F because, one, it's way closer to me than the N. Yeah. And it goes right into the building. Yep. Which I just remembered. Walk down to the F. Do catch a break in this sense, too. It stops raining for the walk. We're going to a concert after this show. Yeah. I didn't want to carry an umbrella. Yeah. I totally get that. That's why I wore a sweat- hooded sweatshirt as well. Yeah. So I'm like, right, let's just, you know, let me get out of here. And we make it to the train. We get on. We swipe. We see a, a truckload of people coming up the stairs, which means, like, we're missing a train. Yeah. We go down there. You got cannonball. I don't down know there. if we're missing a train because there's a ton of people down there. There's a train on the wrong side of the tracks. There's nothing on our side of the tracks is where the, where the F's supposed to be coming. Yeah. We're watching all these people. Everyone seems concerned. We're looking into it. Then it's getting frustrated. People are leaving. People, nope. yeah. People start yelling and you complaining. Got, you already got a bail. Uh, well, listen. The tremors are there. People are yelling, complaining. One girl walks by. She goes, motherfuckers, all the trains are coming on the other side, on the other track. All the trains are coming on the other side of the track. Some some lady. And Christine starts following her. But she does say, Christine goes, um, she goes, is, she goes, it has been, are we sure? Because that's, that's just some girl saying it. That's just a girl saying But Christine's going, so I'm following Christine, too. Because the, so tra- the train's still it, frightening and confused then, me. So you saw it, but then you still were like, eh, well, no, th- a girl, a girl walked by first, and she said, I need to get the fuck out of this city. Yeah. Uh, like, oh, a girl's a having melt. a meltdown was a melt. So it's making everyone's, like, tense, though, yeah. even though you don't want to be. And then uh, a girl goes, all the trains are coming on the other side. It's so it really humid good. down there. But then she was laughing. She goes, no, promise, it's on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> she might as well have done that. You I guys, swear to you, I would have thrown her on the tracks. Guys, if everyone, I could have run over there. Put on a jacket and run over there. <laughs> I think I said, I don't know where she's getting her information. I was like, this is just some chick. We don't know where she's getting her information from. They probably meant the opposite side of the track from where the you know, Balls to the wall. Was. Balls like, to the fucking wall that she had the ball sack to yell out uh, the instructions. That, I mean, hundreds of people followed her like Moses. And they go. <laughs> She's Pied Piper to everybody. Yeah, everyone. We all go over there, myself included. At which point, Christine then looks through this broken down train to see that now that we've all left, the F came on the other side. <laughs> it just came right where it's supposed to come. And, so and now we're young. And, oh, yes. No one's moving their fucking fat asses <laughs> fast enough <laughs> to get the fuck over there. So that train just leaves. Then some guys down there, just some conductor guy going, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> goes, yeah, motherfucker jump on the tracks. This would happen. Oh. Now I think it's, now I think it's going to go really, really bad. We finally, an F train does come though. We get on. Super air conditioned. Uh, then we come across a few stops later an express train. Get on, and now 
I'm like, I don't know if we're going to make it because everything starts going slow. They're, they've said now that somebody jumped on the tracks. There's like an incident at the thing, right? They said basically. They should at least give you their name so you can Google them. I know. You want to see? Oh, yeah. it's part of this guy's death. Oh, man. I, I fucking watched that dude die live. It is a <laughs> real sign. It. it is a real sign of like how garbage, though, like, oh, we all of us are that like someone's dead. He was thrown. He by was? some madman, or it was someone who just felt such yeah, desperation, take or just a, a dipshit that fucking tripped on the goddamn thing or whatever. You know what? If, uh, Trying to impress a girl by always, doing, no, even, but doing shot for shot the entire dancing in the rain routine. Not, you know, that's really funny. Uh, <laughs> it's very specific. I always am worried that's the way I'm going to die on the train. It's just like my shoelace is going to be under doing my a foot. shot for shot no, thing of dancing no, in the rain, doing something dumb like being an idiot, not like getting pushed or like, but just being like, Nyah! and then just tying your shoe, but you don't realize your head's yeah. over the tracks so when the train comes oh. wails your head off. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Uh, but that's like that old Patrice joke where he's like, you're in New York for long enough that when someone dies on the train tracks after about thirty minutes, you're like, all right, kick his head off, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking got somewhere to go. But he's sort of right. Yeah, it, it, is, it is that right. thing where it's like, man, this is really fucked up. Oh, dude, I've had it before, like, especially when I was a waiter, and I was going in, and, like, you have to be there at a certain time to do your side work, and you get better side work if you're earlier, and they're like, did uh, someone getting on the tracks were delayed, and you're like, fuck you! <laughs> dude, that, then we were on, then we had this anxiety, which I don't know if you ever share. I realized we're on the complete opposite side of the train, of well, the door that we have to get out, and it's one of those trains where it's like, yeah. I'm already plotting my route for who I'm willing to like get into a fist fight with afterwards. I'm like, yeah, do I trains. go? Do I go and earn my respect by just going straight at the kid with the black kid with the twisty curl hair wearing the weekend long sleeve t shirt? Because if he's wearing a weekend t shirt, it does yeah. take a little bit of the scary away of the black. And also, but then there's also like you know you can't work your way like white lady tourist group is too hard to break up because they're going to move erratically and they're yeah. not going to move properly. Asians Old, don't give a fuck what your problem is. Give a fuck. Don't give a fuck. Good they're the luck. Cold, they're the coldest culture. I've said this before and again by riding the subways in New York City. If I ever was an NFL football coach and needed a fourth and one back, old Asian lady with grocery bag. <laughs> there ain't no D-line stopping her. A Ziploc bag of, of seaweed. Oh, yeah, just give her a fucking bag of fish heads and be like, hey, the seven trains on the opposite <laughs> side of this end zone. Get them, bus. Yeah, on the Giants. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Coming into the game at 83 years old. It's Sun Sea. She's a member of... Ah, Brew 40 T. Yeah. Brew 40 T. New York Giants uh -huh. picking her up after she ran over defensive coordinator on his way to Queensboro Plaza. Can everybody in this room get excited together that the fucking Giants are just horrible? Yeah. <laughs> all the shit talk Giants fans around here would make about their that, that squad uh, and all uh, those receivers. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, they picked that up. That part is, is when the Giants get good again and then everyone says they were always on board. That is such a New York Giants fan oh, thing. I'm never a Giants fan. But they've always gone like this. I remember in 2010 when they beat the Niners in the NFC Championship game, they were like, at the beginning of the season, they wanted to fire Eli Manning. They wanted to fucking fire everybody. Well, they're back to firing him again there. Yeah, and now they're, now they're like, saying he doesn't bro. care. They go, bro, he's never been good. He's never going to be good, bro. <laughs> he fucking stinks. And then he wins the Super Bowl. They go, I've said since day one, Eli Manning's better than Peyton. I said he's better than Joe Montana. He's got two Super Bowl rings, and I swear to you, I still think he is absolutely horrible. I think he's good. Eli Manning? I used to just kill people with him on NCAA college he stinks. football. stinks. So I am loyal with him. I think he stinks. I think you stink. Do you mean that? Yeah. No, I don't. Uh, I'll okay, tell you who boss. definitely thinks we stink is the king of all media, Howard Stern. I know. Someone called into the Stern show I know, and yeah. said bonfire crackle crackle and it set it Stern didn't like it. Yeah, I listen to every minute every week, yeah, so you are I heard it I heard it nice and live. You are a diehard Howard fan. I mean I'm a Howard fan, but you're like no, it's the back I say it's the background music of my life completely. Yeah. So it was you know, while I would never get behind uh, ever somebody disrupting his show? Yeah, we don't want that. Of our at show. All. Yeah, I would never want any, anybody to do that. Though it was neat, just c constant. You know, uh, what do you call the word? Consequent. Consequently. Oh yes, yes. Because of the guy. That is correct. Thank you. You're because right. of the guy calling and saying that, like, there we, I got to hear Howard. Stern Howard Stern said snapping. the word. Snapping. Yeah. <laughs> about our show. Bonfire. Crackle. Crack, oh, 
Duh. It's like a classic, like, stern anger, too, where yeah. he's like, he goes, crackle, crackle, bonfire. Makes me fucking nuts. <laughs> I wish I could make that my ringtone. Uh-huh. Because it's so cool to hear. That's but the first is, thing. I've been. It's like having your dad yell your name as the first time he says your name. Where you're like, fucking Dan. Uh-huh. And you're like, oh, but I love you. Howard, but I love you so much. It's, it's the. Because Howard's, I mean, both it, of us, Howard Stern's a great influence it's on the, us. It's the hardest thing I've ever tried in my career. To be on or get a beat a part of in some way, and I've been talked uh, like around about Craig Gas. On a show, Craig Gas told a story, and when he go famously, when he goes, uh, Artie Lang, who I know very well, goes, Oh yeah, he goes, I know who that guy is. Uh, he's working with me this weekend. And he goes, Can I say his name? And Stern goes, No. And I was like, I was sitting there, I was like, Look at the, I was looking at the radio with my hands, like, Oh God, he's gonna do it. He's gonna do it. And he goes, Can I say his name? So he's, no. I'm like, Why would he? Not Say his name. Just say my name. They used to shit on everybody by name. They like, he's like, no, this guy might not want his name out there. <laughs> no, that's that guy saying. only wanted his name out there. Is that really what he said? Oh, yeah. oh that's so great. So, I mean, uh, by he's the way. He's been such a part of my life. Dude, Howard Stern was my first, my first mushroom trip ever. I just sat and watched. And he changed my thoughts on how to treat people. For, I don't know if it was a good message. He was basically taught me that I should hold a grudge, is what it sounded like. Oh, it, was a, it was a Howard TV episode about him getting furious that Infinity Broadcasting yeah. would hire people. He'd beat, like he'd beat somebody, yeah. and they'd get fired yeah. in the ratings, and then Infinity Broadcasting would hire them. It was just some dude I forget. It's not Vic DiBella, is it? It might be. I think it is, because it's in his book. Maybe it was The Grease Man. It no, wasn't it, wasn't, it wasn't the Grease Man. No, well, this guy. This guy was, was, was like, this guy was like a nobody. Oh, okay. This guy I'm... was sort of like a nobody. But it was he did a radio show with a guy who used to be Stern's friend. I guess that guy like kind of tried to hijack Stern's show for his own radio show once. Yeah. And but whatever it was, it was just Stern sitting in the studio. I mean, dressed in this. And, and the guys was... and the guys in there just to go goes. I kissed the ring. I'm very sorry. And he just basically goes, he goes when my contract comes up. He goes, I'm not going to bother with you. I'm not going to argue with you. He's like, but when my contract comes up, I'm going to say part, part of my contract for me to continue working at this building or this uh, company will be that this guy is not is, is not part of this company. Yeah. And I was like, that's just badass, man. I don't know. I like that he just tells it to him like that. I, I really... Uh, so here's what I'm going to do. I like the knife twist now, here's at what the I'm end. Do. It's balls to the wall. I, yeah. I'd never want him to come after us. <laughs> well, there you go. I would just be sad. Oh, if he... Why? But I love... Listen, I love that like whatever our well, Baba Booey is, Crackle Crackle... Yeah, it's neat that it like happened. Like, and to, you know, Joe Lopez, who did it, uh, tweeted at me. He tweeted at me like right after today. Thank you, Joe. I mean, ultimately, he thank said, you. That I was said, really cool. I, I mean, it didn't really, it didn't dis- disrail like the show or anything. He tweeted so. at me. He said, "I said crackle crackle bonfire on Howard Stern," and he repeated it. <laughs> so much, so angry. <laughs> like, because I think the guy was like, "I did it." I got hard to say the show. Like, well, it's great. I, yeah, I, we, can't, we can't. We can't play it. But what, what's we great can't, about not it? Play it? I know. Yeah. It's right now. It's, it's but rules. thank you. I mean, but, but, but he goes, don't bother him. But he does go. He does go. Don't uh, bother him. I mean, thank you. But like, dad, don't bother. Don't bother. Him. Don't bother the guy, dude. He goes. Uh, busy enough. He goes. Oh, one more thing. And Stern's like, what? He goes, crackle, crackle. Bonfire. Uh, you hear his little trickle off laugh. <laughs> because he's just kind of like, what now? He's like, I did it. I said it. It's like when you I wish we had a cooler, like, like you, phrase that was like our thing. It's like when you hit someone in the mouth and then you go, ah, now what? I did it. Oh, my. Baba Booey's so defining. Like, yeah. we don't have our, like, you know. If people would say it, it'd be like other... You know what I mean? Like, remember two two two. Like Corey Feldman shit. It's like that's not not really our thing, but but it's oh, one yeah. of the things we make fun of. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, one childhood. Uh, Corey uh, Feldman in the market for new angels. By the I mean, way, I mean, pushing hard. Yeah. And by the way, he's, he's like, you want to work tonight? Yeah. <laughs> like, what if I told you I could get you on a continental flight? <laughs> the continental doesn't fly anymore. <laughs> what if I told you I had a Pan Am flight? <laughs> yeah. TWA flight fifteen forty two smoking section. <laughs> <laughs> all the all the martinis you can down <laughs> on the way to LA. I'll pick you up. Right now they're in a college, and the college is called Corey's Angels. Oh, uh, University of Corey's Angels. Um, oh yeah. Well, you know, it's uh, something that happened this weekend. The answer was actually on Stern today and said something about Corey Feldman. I can't remember why. I was what? so bummed. Marilyn Manson oh. was just here all morning, and I just. Uh. Did you guys know Marilyn Manson was going to be here? Jacob, did you know? Did you know Jacob? Uh, no, I didn't know he was on. This morning, I'm trying to get. Uh, I'm working we couldn't very have done. Hard. We couldn't have done a better interview for sure. But I mean, like, on a knowledge of Marilyn Manson level, it would have been very interesting. You just want to meet the guy. Talk. I just want to like. 
I, but I, here's the thing. I'm also always into. I was saying, I was hoping we can get the war on drugs guy in here because I want to talk about great how at for like a, a year. We had a good every couple of months back and forth yeah. in texts. I didn't think I was coming out of the gate. In fact, he reached out to me when he heard me on Coppelman's podcast. There you go. Came to me. It is. It has been one sided <laughs> for a long time. After that, a lot of blues. A lot of bl- all blue. All blue. And you know what really hurts? They still come up blue, which means it's probably still him. Oh yeah. If it's green, then you're like, I try to text. If it's all green, someone. you're like, I'm either blocked or oh, yeah. best case scenario, he changes. No, that happens. That happens. Rogan changes number constantly. Yeah. All those things. That, you know what I mean? Yeah. Artie Lang nonstop changes Pete, number. I think Pete Davidson sells cocaine. That's how much he changes. Yeah. Number. Pete Davidson sells cocaine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> you've heard it here first. Everybody. Wow. Well, I was saying because he changes his number, no, but no. I mean, if Jay wants to incriminate him. <laughs> If you want to get him, just say if you want to go, okay, you got to go. Um, well, what, what's interesting and what perspective... Hang on a second. I uh, my, uh, let's fix this going because uh, before we change the uh, second, we don't take the call. Mike in Connecticut, I don't think he knew what the bonfire was. He had no idea what the bonfire was. No, right? yeah. He didn't think course. about it. Yeah. He has no idea. That's why he said, what the hell is that? Yeah. It's some stupid thing this guy is into is what he said. Yeah, so. which, by the way, he's right. <laughs> some stupid thing. He's absolutely Joe right. That I appreciate That's a stupid it. thing that he's into. The Stern Show is a stupid thing I'm into, but yeah. I love that stupid thing. I wouldn't say that. I mean, I'm into wrestling. Some people call that a stupid thing. It's a stupid thing. R.I.P. Bobby Heenan. Um, <laughs> this weekend, I had a little uh, hang with Jacob. Where, I, ordered where? The, I ordered the Gennady Golovkin fight. Uh, oh, he came over for it. And then everyone but Jacob bailed. Everyone. All, everyone bailed. Who? One by one through the afternoon, all of my friends. My friend Josh and his friend Andy were supposed to come over. They got too drunk during the day. And they're like, they live in Jersey, and they're like, we can't come over. Lewis... And Justin Silver was supposed to come over. Justin Silver got sick. That didn't happen. Yeah. And then Lewis was Lewis. Lewis called me. He's like, oh, yeah. No, there was UFC on at the same time. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to watch the Gennady Golovkin fucking Canelo Alvarez fight. He's like, yeah, no, no, no. But there's also UFC on. And then he just didn't show. He just never showed. Just didn't call it in show. No. No call, no show. Were you ordering food based on him in any way? Uh, I ordered a whole pizza. And Jacob ate a slice and I ate five. So that's cool. Hey, you know, five slices. Yeah, I was a little that's fat. A lot. So. I was, was that my Zubaz pants? No, that was Sunday. All, <laughs> it was an all Zubaz Sunday. But uh, Jacob comes over, brings. I'm not joking when I say this. The most delicious pie I've ever had. Apple pie I've ever had in my life. Yeah, it was. You made fucking it yourself. Unbelievable. Fantastic. And I'll tell you this. I don't like apple pie. Come and on. I fucking Come loved on. this. What? You like I, apple pie? My mom made, I mean, if T to D ever hears this, she'll fucking break her heart. She has garbage pies. Great she cakes. She made them? She made pies. Gar- it wasn't good. It was she mostly makes bad just, pies? She makes bad pies. Trish makes bad pies is a good t-shirt. If Comedy Central could let us have merch. But Trish makes bad pies. <laughs> Trish makes bad pies would be a great, be a great with a pie shirt. stand. Oh, but yeah. no. How about we don't Gary, have a goddamn deal. How about Gary makes dope stromboli? <laughs> yeah, I like that. Gary makes dope. Oh, man. All the t-shirts that we could have. My dad makes great stromboli. Does he? Oh. I mean, it's, it's my it? recipe for stromboli now that I do is my dad's. And it's great. Christine will tell you. See, it's, a, it's, a, it's a heart murmur. My mom <laughs> is my mom's an unbelievable cook. Unbelievable not cook. Not a good baker. But not a great baker. She's an unbelievable cook, not a good baker. And her, her pies are mostly like, you know when it's just like apples and sauce and it's not like a lot of pie like the pie is basically just the crust and under and above it's just, it's just raw apples with crust I'm on like, either side oh god this is brutal <laughs> yeah and this was a french apple cake it's supposed to be a little custardy french apple I, the way he just so did what? his fingers i want to break i his like hand. that yeah he was like he just did it like a little little piece just a, a little. custardy so it wasn't a pie so much it was more of a cake it was an apple yeah. cake. I, you know what? I, oh, I could appreciate that. A French apple cake. cake? Let's Dude, see that. It was fucking awesome. I still got one slice. Did it look like that? Yeah. If, Why the fuck would you ever call that a pie? No, it was. It didn't look like that because it didn't have the powdered sugar on. And no, I, but forget the sugar. It's the consistency that. No, it was the consistency of a cake. That's c- cake. Yeah. It was a cake. Yeah, apparently it was a cake. So that's probably why you thought your mom didn't make good pies, is because it was cake. <laughs> <laughs> wait, hold on. <laughs> wait, what, wait, the pies are which? Was, that wasn't a pie. That was a cake? <laughs> it, was a, it was a cake. Man, I thought I was back on board with apple pies here for a second. Hey, I don't, I'm just looking at you. are not sure what pie is. I don't think I know what pie is. It's. I don't like pie, I think. Is pie like it's all clumpy and fucking... What? It depends on what pie you got. I mean, I had like, you know... 
don't think I've ever had pie. <laughs> I'm not a huge pie fan. Uh, yeah, that's pie. Uh, yeah, I just don't like pie. <laughs> that's I'll pie. Say, I'll say it. So Trish made it perfect. You yeah. just don't like pie. Yeah. Do you know what, Mom? I'm sorry. You know, it's all apple and... <laughs> syrupy. Yeah, you know I what? what pie is. I was completely wrong. I don't like pie. You like pumpkin pie? That's got a more of a consistency of cake. No, it's got like a cheesecake cheese consistency. Cake. Ah, what the hell is day and night? What, can you tell me what's cake and what's pie? Yeah. I mean, no, I can't. I can only just say one's cake love, and one is pie. I love cheesecake. And I love pumpkin pie. I don't like Well, I mean, this pie. pie is right in the name, so you can't say I hate all pie. All right. You uh, like pumpkin pie I so like far? I love pumpkin pie. You love hair pie? <laughs> I love hair pie. I love, I love cre- Christine, and I bake. <laughs> <laughs> you love Christine? I love cream pies. You're wearing, <laughs> your, Bobby, you're wearing your Bobby Heenan shirt? You love Bobby Heenan? Um, uh, Christine loves rhubarb pie. I know which rhubarb is that. great. I love Bobby's rhubarb pie. wife makes an unbelievable rhubarb pie. Really? Yeah. Pie. I don't know. It was just pie. Well, nobody makes rhubarb cake, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, see, uh, I don't f- fully understand rhubarb. Isn't it like a? It's a gross vegetable. Yeah, it's a little bitter, but rhubarb pie with vanilla ice cream is amazing. Yeah. Marie Callender's. Uh, are you <laughs> yeah, you stand behind a rhubarb pie, Jacob? Yeah, that's great. You love it. Yeah. Mm. Well, I was. Lou doesn't strike me as a pie guy. Are White you Lou? kidding me? Lou, Lou, Lou. His, dad was, his dad would put out cigarettes on him. Yeah. <laughs> Lou looks like the kind of guy that would just grab a piece of pie out of the dish with his hand. There you go. I'll make you it in the garage. He eats pie. He eats yeah. pie like that with the whole... The he, walks by, he walks by and grabs it like this. Thanks, Ma. There you go. I'm going to take this outside. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's good rhubarb, ma. And, uh, and black lube before I even all black guys love pie. Black people just love pie. Is that true? Basically. Yeah. Yeah. My mom makes a crazy sweet potato pie. I'll have to bring it in. Yeah, you because that's still, it's that's a dessert pie, right? Oh, hell yeah. Sweet potato pie, I just don't. I guess sweet potato, like, in general is, like, I you love know, sweet the, potato the marshmallow, and yeah. people, they make it pretty sweet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm it's a dessert. I, I I like it more as a dessert pie, a, a sweet potato fry than eat a pie than um, sweet potatoes. That like it's too sweet for sometimes a main course. I think I've tried to get in the sweet potato fries in lieu of French fries. I'd rather just have a salad. Sweet potato fries suck <laughs> dick. I don't get it. I really don't get it. Lou, you're, you're nodding your head. You agree? I hate those. Sweet potato fries. Just fuck one of my an asshole. Just give me a salad. Yeah. You're right. I'm not eating. One of my baby. I'd rather wait. These are baby fries. fries once a week. Yeah. If I want to eat fries. I want them salty through. and I want them greasy. I did do Burger King at the Calgary airport. Somebody yeah. tweeted me and they were right. There was a Burger King there. Didn't lie. It was not worth it. No? Bum, bum me out, actually. Oh, dude, I'm sorry. Do you bum want me to, out the rest of the day. You want to take a commercial and talk about it? It was 9 in the morning. <laughs> I was supposed to eat it then, and I just felt shitty about myself. Yeah. At, at the, uh, the most recent I've ate McDonald's was at the Minneapolis airport in the morning, and I had egg McMuffins, and they nailed it. It was, yeah, they just no, it. that's a thing they could nail, though. It was dumb to get a Whopper. It was like 10 in the morning, but it was yeah. just dumb to get a Whopper. Okay. And you also took it off the bread anyway, right? And I took it off the bread anyway. What are you doing? I don't know. I was got. I was angry at myself for the whole thing. <laughs> it was cheat day, but I just, I don't know. It seemed, like, it seemed like a wasted, like, day to, yeah. All right, well, let's take a break and regroup, and then we'll come back. And you want to hug till we come back? Yeah, let's, let's embrace. But, okay. and I just feel like I'm learning so much today. I learned what pie is. <laughs> Okay. You know, it's a big day. Yeah. By the way, Jacob, great cake. (laughs) But it was an even better pie. Yeah. Should have kept the pie, though. (laughs) Gold pie. Cake. We'll be right back. It's the bonfire. And now, back to the bonfire with Big J. Okerson and Dan Soder. Hey, look, it's the bonfire. So we're on drugs. New album. That song is up all night. Uh, we're going to see. We're on drugs right after the show tonight. Yeah, they're at Terminal 5 tonight in New York City. Invited everybody else to the show. No one gave a shit. No one gave a shit. Guess who did give a shit? Me, Jay. You did, as Me. always. Is, did we brighten these lights in here? Nah. I feel like they're up for some reason. USA is up all night. Hmm. I'm Dan Soto. That's Big Jay Okerson. You're listening to the Bonfire Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. Maybe I just got woke. That- Maybe it's the first time I've been woke. Oh! Oh, welcome to societal... Ju- <laughs> That's a made-up word. It's societal, not even... Is that a word? I really doubt myself most of the time. <laughs> what up? You think I'm woke now? At the Bonfire, SXM, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, all that bullshit. All that good old dirty bullshit. All that bullshit. So dirty, this guy... Uh, 
There's a couple of things I want to talk about, but there's this video that Lou 2 found us that I fucking love of police in Ohio uh, getting a call from a family that somebody was in their house. And the cops... We'll just play the video because you can't really hear it. What you hear, you can't hear the reveal. But in Ohio, this, this, this family called the police because someone was in their house. And what they found was a man on their couch jerking off. Oh, what kind of couch? No. Was it super Yeah, he's on the couch playing with himself. Is it covered in plastic? That's pretty... No, wow. look, it's like a couch oh, next God. to another couch, which is super white trash. <laughs> That's the white trash sectional. Uh, they break in, but here's the thing is, at the Bonfire SXM on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, pause right there. That's my favorite part. Uh, we're going to put out the video. It's not a lot of audio, so we have to describe a lot what's happening. Mm-hmm. But they go into the house, and it's two couches next to each other, and the dude is in... Uh, the only position I could call it is no one is home, I'm 16, and it's Saturday morning jerk-off pose. Yeah, one leg's up on the side of the couch. He's going frogger. He's laying down. He's got frog legs going yeah. as he's beating. And here's the my favorite part, and this is why I paused it. The police shine a flashlight on him, and he's still working it. Oh, yeah. I mean, the pure... Oh, he's like, thanks, I almost lost it. He goes, <laughs> oh, yeah, I've never done it to a strobe show before. He's like, oh, there it is. Yeah, you guys. Oh, look at that, look at that jerk riz. Oh, one of you fucking furry lip hamsters want to come in here and finish me off? When do you put your nightstick in my butt? Watch me shoot. <laughs> you want to come in here and top me off, officer? Oh, watch me. Hey, officer knob gobbler. Am yeah. I saying that right? Oh, oh, hey, look, a bacon factory just let out. Why don't you come over here and suck it? Do they show the cops? Here it is. Beat the living shit out of this guy. No, yeah, I mean they they get them good. Uh, rewind it a little bit. Just like, there it is. Uh, authorities responding. And he goes, the cop just goes, he's moving. And he goes, oh, yeah, he's moving. He's masturbating. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear it in the, because the, oh, he's moving all right. There it is. Ah, they put the fucking music to it. Look at him go. Calvin Bishop Blinn. Dude, he's jerking off like he's just relaxing. Oh, the house's residents hid in the back room during the incident. So he basically kept people hostage by jerking off. And then they got him. This is where they get him. And he's like, oh, man, my dick. He goes, oh, you're lucky I'm soft right now, and I just shot. He's like, oh, I was right there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Oh, you guys can give me two more minutes? I was right there. Oh, look at him. I mean, he's just. That's a big blur. Hi. He's got a nice hog, but huh? He's, he's, look, he's also looking back at the door like, hey. Oh, what's up? You guys want to see a little bit? Oh, me? You want to see just a tip? Oh, no, I don't live here, but I'm making myself at home. I can't believe those cops have an eye watch. Do you, as a cop, do you let the guy finish? Oh, me as a cop? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I see if I can talk him to it myself. You go like this. You go, uh, what are you into? Hey, how you doing? You just grab the, you yeah. know how they always grab the radio on their chest? Or you go, yeah, hold on. Let me talk to him real quick. <laughs> yeah. Hey, sport, what are you into? I think I got this guy. Guys, guys, stand down. So, I think I got this guy. You know like how they have negotiators so, uh, who talk to hostage takers? Is they, they talk to him like a hostage taker? <laughs> Listen, we want to get you out of here safe, but we want to make sure you come before we touch you. Hey, why don't you, uh... Rub that helm a little bit for me, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you're not gonna, you're not gonna touch your balls. It seems a little greedy. Give Is it, that what you are? You a greedy give piggy? It, give it, give it a little spit. You want, you want me to spit on it? Hang, Hang on. on, hold on. <laughs> I'm not gonna get near you because if I get near you, I'm gonna have to arrest you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, what are you doing? You almost done there? Yeah. Do you want me to get the spray bottle for your cat and just shower you? <laughs> Let me see your palm for a second. I mean, yeah. that guy's, it's insane that he stayed that focused. Just I mean, he's definitely on drugs. Him. But, dude, I that, watched. That's a meth beat. I watched the newest episode of Cops, mm-hmm. and I'm telling you, I can't believe in the climate we are in right now with people dealing with cops and all that shit and all the videos that, that cops is so balls to the wall of just showing themselves like, oh, yeah, that's how we handle it. The first one is a black kid. Who's definitely whacked out on meth, right? They like they get out of the car while he's walking and just go get over here, get over here. Or the cops say that, yeah. And, yeah. He, and he's like, what? Why? What's you know what I mean? Which he's I on get. meth, which means he's probably not in the best state of mind. No, but they're like, what do you need? And they kind of go like, whoa, what are you being weird? Why are you jerking away for? Because he is being weird. But it's like also. Why are you grabbing them? You know what I mean? It's like everything's yeah. wrong. Like they wouldn't show this if the kid didn't have something going on. I'd think, right? Well, they're not if- going to show just like a routine, like fucking fuck with somebody. But here's what they do: they go, uh, they they cuff them yeah. pretty aggressively. 
And he's got a book bag on. He goes, I'm not uncuffing you, so we're going to cut that book bag off, which you don't have to do. It's definitely got the straps you could take apart. But they just cut it off. And let him in. What's up, Ben? Good to see you, buddy. On the show. Friend of the show. Yeah, wherever you want to go. Uh, Rude Jew. Welcome back to the bonfire, dude. From the All Out Show. Shay 45. Did, they, did you tell them what the hell happened yesterday? Dude, I, I, got, gave a brief, I have very limited a brief info. brief off-air. I have very limited info, but for, from what I know is that you uh, went and were a part of the SDR show and received... I just this is just what I have. A, I just want to sell a book, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where well, you can get Rude Jude's new book, Hummingbird, available now, yeah. so go pick it up. Um, but I heard that you made it into a bathroom with... I got a, my dick sucked. By a heavier lady? Yeah, I did, the size didn't matter. Okay. The size did not what? matter. It didn't matter. She definitely looked like she had, like, gusto. Yeah. Like, she was really... Well, that's usually what you want, that Rudy character. She was a, yeah, and she was cute. Like, yeah. she was, she was like chubby and fuckable. Okay. Like, grab her stomach when you come. Type, yeah. You, know? you go like you this. Would... <laughs> you make that noise? I love that shit. <laughs> I love it. It was like, big. Like her pet in the St. Bernard? It's... <laughs> it's softer than a titty, really. <laughs> the, well, the belly fat? Yeah, it really yeah. is. Oh, oh so I know. Nice. Oh, absolutely. Do, sure. do, you, do you rub your back of your hand along it? Like, look at the texture. It's I haven't so even sweet. done that yet. Yeah. I, I, I paw it like a fuck. I just paw it like a caveman. Oh. You're, you're real. Yeah, you got to squeeze it together so it makes like a butt, and then you put your dick in their butt, in their belly button. Oh, you go dick mashed potatoes? That's the hardest <laughs> shit I've ever heard. That is fucking hard as hell. Yeah, just push it together. <laughs> so, how did it go? That's called a hillbilly pussy. <laughs> yeah, hillbilly. A, a, yo, I think, yo, look. Okay. She, she was like. Yeah, that's her right there. She yeah. was, she um she bent the fuck out of my dick, dude. I didn't even want to like Yeah. She, Too aggressive? She you could tell she could deep throat, but the angle was weird, so she she kept going for the deep throat trying to show out. Yeah. And it was just just turning my dick into a U-turn sign. Yeah, I've had that before. <laughs> that's it? like the blowjob version of uh the dunk competitions where they yeah. keep missing and then they yeah. keep trying the same dunk and you're like, "Different dunk, dude. Do a different <laughs> dunk, dude. This isn't going to work." I want to tell these young like just like slow and steady. Yes. Just fucking slow and steady. Get that shit hard and Get then a go rhythm. crazy. Get yeah. a rhythm. <laughs> Paradigal, paradigal, paradigal. You know what it means if you were saying that? fucking uh, metronome on her forehead. You go like this, you go, are you ready to go? <laughs> yep. There you and go. And just suck to that. And time. Doe, a deer, a female deer. Yeah, just, okay. just simple 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, yep, straight up. Okay, now we're going to pace it up because I'm ready to come. <laughs> That's it. Throw that hand in there a little bit. You know, like, uh, it's we're, we're, it's not that hard. Yeah, it's like a piano teaching for a fucking It was a wild guy. night. It was a wild, wild night. Uh, che was there. Yeah. Um, He had a blast. It was so ridiculous. I, I, you know what? These, my favorite thing about it was, uh, this is how cool porn stars really are, by the way. Outside, I talked to one of the porn stars, and she was like, so what is it we're doing here exactly? I was like, oh, shit. Like, you don't know. Like, Ralph didn't. Are they like mercenaries? Are they like fuck mercenaries? Or they're like, what? what the what? one seemed like it. Yeah, what, yeah, kind yeah. Of, what kind of job do you get? Fuck, yeah, the, the, I mean, the two of the girls were, like, hilarious. Like, Pete, like the girl who won yeah. was hilarious in her own right. But the girl who came in second place, Lucia, I believe her name was, mm -hmm. was just out of her fucking mind. She was crazy. She though. wanted somebody to forehead dildo, like put a dildo on their forehead. Was second with place? It. Yeah. Yeah, it's second place. Oh, that's always like... And she I'll tell you what, she photographs way better than she way looks. Way better than she looks. She because... had a nose like a pit bull. <laughs> <laughs> so, she looked like a red bone pit. So she came in, she came in, by the way, she came in, she came in hammered. And so she was saying things like, she was just very loud, obnoxious, and she said something. I don't even remember she what it was. Talking about me getting uh, drinking cum and having cum. Oh, on, whatever. Oh, on. look at that picture. That is so great. That looks like such an aggressive. But that looks like a picture from fucking cops. By the way, the aggression was all her. She was yelling at him. That's, she fucker. killed my boner because I was getting my dick sucked while that was happening, <laughs> and all I heard was like fucking Chiquita Banana in the background. Like I'm like, yo, my dude, I been call me. My husband been call me. <laughs> <with his mess. laughs> I fucking tell you, my. Homie, homie, go kill you. <laughs> Is it not enough pesos for these? Dude's just in the bathroom. Like, <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I, goes, I don't make enough pesos for these. Yeah. Dude's so like, sleepy. Yeah, Jude's like, shut up. Shut up. Oh, I bet. I couldn't. Yeah, after, when she started yelling, I tell the girl to just stop. I'm like, fuck it. I'm not going to get she there. She was a lunatic. But anyway, she said something. Uh. She kept doing that. That's what it was. And you've been around this type of girl a thousand times, too, Dan. Uh, some comic always brings them around, but the girl who, like, uh, 
every joke that gets made, like it, she just puts it back on. You know what I mean? So that's what it was. Yeah. It was like, all right, uh, it's like, all right, you know, you gotta swallow that fake cum. You gotta put all yeah. that fake cum here. And she goes, do you know that from experience? Because you have cum in your mess, like that kind of shit. Yeah. And you're like, uh, okay, it's basically, I get it now. It's all longer versions like, of that. You gotta put said. this dildo in your butt. Goes, why don't you put? Because you know how good it feel when you put it in your butt, oh, right? You gotta put it in your cookie. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. look like you suck all the dick. Oh, oh, my yeah. God. Uh, and I, I would, don't. I, would, I don't suck dick. You clearly do. You have a video record of it. <laughs> so, and I was being quiet. Should. So she thought I was like the lame of the bunch or some shit. Yeah. She, she clearly has never seen the Jenny Jones show. Yeah. Like, you were hired for this very thing. Yeah. <laughs> she, he goes, you know what? He goes, I'm going to be cool because you want me to start talking about that fucked up nose. She, he goes, you know what? He goes, I'm going to be cool because you want me to start talking about that fucked up nose. Oh, and Christine God. pointed out later that she goes, you know what? She did kind of turn it around after that. Like, so wait, it really you called didn't put her, her in line. You called her out on the nose, and then she stopped. I guess. Yeah, I, yeah, I was like, yeah, I was like, all right, man, yeah. You know? <laughs> I acted like she didn't hear it, but then she shaped up after. By the that. way, now with that picture of that nose, she really does look like fucking uh, Tinker Bell's fucked up sister, dude. I don't know yeah, what dude. that nose is about. Man, you know Brazil got them. The, the Brazil got the plastic surgery. Oh, they'll do anything. Yeah, they'll right? do anything. You can go down to Brazil and be like, I want an arm put on my chest. See, it yeah, almost looks like a drawing though, like where somebody. He cut off her actual nose and just put back yeah. on this little she, thing. Yeah, it's fucking, yeah. It's fucking. If you told me, if she turned her face and it looked like Two-Face and it was all burned on the other side, <laughs> that'd be the only way to Dog, for real, she had a nose like a burn victim. That's the best way to put it. Like favela she goes, fucking. Do I know how it looks? She has Freddy Krueger nose. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at that. She looks like, she, yeah. Her lipless oh, fucking burn God. face. Jesus Christ. Poor Chad, he ain't know what he was getting into either. He was like, man, this, whoa, he no, shit. He had for it, but he didn't know like how that's funny. how gross it can get at Ralph's house, man. I know. mean, yo, dude, like I I'm a grimy motherfucker, and I and I was like, man, I'm really finna get my dick sucked right now. Like, <laughs> I wasn't so even funny. stoked about it. I was just like, I all right, I guess this is happening. <laughs> you came out and described it. He was like, it was good, but a bit of a dick bender with that deep throat game and whatever. Because I told her though, she can come talk shit on my dick if she wants. Because I'm gonna come out here and critique her thing. He was yeah. really honest about it. She so has a nice mouth. Like, yeah. there's a there's a future for her in dick sucking. It's just. Do you feel she was going? Do you feel like she was going for too much too soon? Look, man, it's like, yo, I used to do that shit when I ate pussy. I'd be like, oh, let me eat the pussy, and I'd be like, <laughs> like try to do different moves. Yeah, the chick will run up the wall. Like, what the fuck are you doing? You just blow on my ready? clit. I go, you ready to get feed bag? Fucking run her up the wall. <laughs> You got to build to that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so she just, yeah. She no, started in fourth you ever, year. You ever going sideways for the harmonica? <laughs> <laughs> I go like this. I go, I know a girl. <laughs> I got a wet pussy. And when I lick the clit, she squirted in my mouth. You she go, got a big old beefy pussy. <laughs> <laughs> and I look at Shannon's face. It's just Shannon. like, no. Shannon did not want to be there. Yeah. Well, Shannon also was ground zero. So, Ralph, one of the events was uh, how far can you put a dildo up your butt? Oh, uh, More points if you don't use lube, if you use your own spit as lube. Yeah. It was more points. This is all, these are Ralph ideas. I, look, I Ralph's co-sign like, them. Ralph's I co-sign like them a, for sure. Uh, but Ralph's like a sexual jigsaw. He's like, yeah. I want to play a game. <laughs> I want to see how far you can get this rubber dildo up your butt with no lube. <laughs> There's a key. It's, yeah. unlock, it's unlocking happiness deep inside you. Yeah. I have find it with this dildo. I have your son in a cage, 40 stories below the ground. Suck this rubber dildo in your throat, or your son dies. <laughs> Take this magnetic dildo and get the key from your intestines. Fuck your friend to death. I think that actually was the thing. Oh, that was fucking, seven. That was fucking your seven. friend to death? Oh, seven yeah, yeah, was yeah. the thing where he put the blade on the dildo and made him fuck. That's fucking hilarious. Uh, so one of the things was get a dildo up your butt with the least amount of lube? Or well, just how deep you can get in your asshole. Basically how deep you can get in your asshole. Did you guys play How Deep Is Your Love while you were playing it? We should have. Yeah, that's dope. In hindsight, we should have. I'm sorry. I'm a real Monday morning quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> should have been there, bro. Oh, fuck. The first girl I got all these ideas. 
The idea of watching girls dildo their assholes really sounds like a great idea. Unfortunately, it went bad immediately. Hey, there you are. And that girl particularly. Dude, I do like that you look like a doctor in this. Uh, <laughs> was, was, he was a judge. My, I took that shit serious. <laughs> yeah, but it looks like that's it like a, a medicinal job. stand. It was, well, he was marking where, on the dildo. Oh, okay. Once he was again, marking where it was. Once again, Che has a real career and he couldn't <laughs> fucking he couldn't get. I he, just, he comes he in. with his job on. <laughs> <laughs> fucking NBC, so I get to fucking... Yeah, Jude has to stand in because Che doesn't want to go to work today, and Lauren go, I heard you were, um... I heard you were putting dildos in girls' butts. Okay, right. Uh, we got the My son's a friend of Loretta Vendetta, who I believe was the first girl to dildo her butt. Do you yeah. know her? She's got a lot of good work. <laughs> Check her out. She's got some good work. Um, Loretta Vendetta goes first. Gets that thing way up there. Quick. Uh, Jude Marks. Really? Jude Mar yeah, Jude Marks it. Did she do like a breathing exercise? Or she look just at it, grip look it, it, rip look it. it. That's her face. Look at that face oh, she's making. Fast. Deep concentration. I didn't know that we had the same stomach. <laughs> <laughs> me and Beretta and Vendetta have the same tummy. You no I know, idea. it looks like Homer's mouth. Mmm, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> well, Whatever, man. She was cool, man. Yeah, she was super cool because what happened next could have sent somebody into a spiral. Uh, of real, like, sad or weirdness or whatever. Because she puts it in there. She buries it. She gets it all the way. Deep. <laughs> yeah, there it is. She buries it, pulls it out. And, man. <laughs> it's just funny. You talking about a rubber dildo with this dumb, with this fucking Gib Brothers in the back. Oh, uh, the Brothers Gib. Uh, uh, whatever. I, I don't know how she didn't feel this. It looks like she just, like, smashed a dildo into... Uh, 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 a pile of soft serve shit. I mean, it, it came out so covered in shit. So covered in shit. Was it really that bad? Like pulling it out? Ask, well, here's what you ask. Don't ask me or Jude. Ask fucking Ground Zero, Christine, on the floor, like eyes to ass level with her. Yeah, it, it came just right out and you could just see it immediately. And she didn't freak out about it, but she didn't do anything. Christine was, Christine should have like, been like, doo doo! Or... Right? But I mean, it was, I mean, did I, it drop out of her after? No. Did she no, have like ch shooting chicken shit? You know, no, like, no, no. Just draw. Okay. No. Nah. But she was super casual about it. Didn't go she rinse goes, it off. The hell of shit was she wiped it off with a towel and then just held the towel. Like she was just. No, she wiped her ass with a paper towel and then just wrapped the dildo in that paper towel and put it on the table <laughs> right in front of Jay. That's so, Who, I'll like, be honest with you, Jay. I was about to make a big deal about it. Jay didn't make a big deal about it, so I just didn't make a big deal about it. For her to put that out there, like, there you go, champ. She yeah. goes, anyway, there's my measurement. Yeah. <laughs> it's locking my score. She goes, clear it. <laughs> so then, who, how many more other contestants tried this? All of them. Three. Wow. The, the What would probably be considered the hottest one didn't uh it didn't get it in almost at all she got the tip in the fuck yeah profession. she also got everyone's numbers at the end <laughs> everyone was like here's my number just you know i saw what's up on the rubber dildo challenge. that's the one to suck my dick right there little chubby one okay yeah but she's got a cute face um but yo yeah it was the the chicks that the, the the civilians really were showing out, dude. Like civilian, you you guys always overvalue these professionals because yeah. they do it. Not you guys, but a lot of dudes overvalue professionals because they do it on camera. It doesn't mean they're better. It just means they do it on fucking camera. Yeah, it's like Donald it, Trump said that on Stern, actually, I remember on Howard Stern show, when he said that like all those big time like superstars and like you know everyone's Angelina Jolie goes there's better chick just waitresses in New York oh, these are like yeah. the hottest chicks like but that's York. also like filthy like what Jude's talking about is like filthy yeah. girl, like there's girls that are like yeah I never went pro but I could probably be pro yeah <laughs> it was pros versus Joes and they were dunking on it <laughs> <laughs> they were fucking dunking on it uh, pros versus Joes dude I loved that show yo the worst was <laughs> the worst was the, the one with the fucking the, the burn victim nose girl Oh, yeah. She fucking, uh, <laughs> she just, she put lube all over the fucking place. And yeah. I, I got to dig in there with the Sharpie and uh, <laughs> and, and hit the yeah. measurement like you, you got yeah. a mark on the dildo. And it was like, 
just reaching in there, it was the slimiest experience. Oh. It was just yeah, she was covered in. Is it like a scene it scene was, from Alien? Yeah, bro, it was like when um, you can't do that on television when you say I don't know <laughs> and then you get yeah. fucking slimed. That's it was what I gack. felt like. <laughs> yeah. she's she's got, got the gack butt. Yeah, dude, it was fucking uh bum. So could you not mark it because it was so lubed up? Yeah, it ruined the sharpie. Like the the little bro in the sharpie, this shit was glistening when it was done. That shit was fucking glistening. You know what uh, Jude was doing last night that uh, I told him we did on the show before? He was the, the snuff. I got uh, it in my pocket. Wait, yeah. you, so you snuff? Yeah, because I quit ketamine and I just like snorting things. How often? Now, the book, Hummingbird, is it about ketamine? It's about everything, everything, man. It's like, it's about, it's funny, it's fucked up, it's sad. Like, people laugh and cry on that shit. Okay. Like, literally, like, hard rocks cry. I got motherfuckers, I got tough guys crying on that shit and cracking up. So it's like just following, uh, I'm going, I go through like a ketamine bender. Okay. And talk about, like, growing up, uh, in Michigan. Like, okay. Just kind of rust belt flyover type shit. They, when did you stop doing ketamine? Um, I don't know, like Easter. Okay. Very, you know. What made you cut it off too much? No, I just had to sell the book, man. <laughs> like, honestly, like, I was at a, I was at a sweet spot, too. I was like, I, I was doing really good. Yeah. But that shit's expensive. What do you like about, I've never done ketamine, but I've had friends who have done it, and they, uh, some people love it. Is it an up? Is it an up? Uh, it's a weird it's a dis oh, yeah? it's a, I can't even say dissociative or some shit like that. Okay. But so here's the deal. I got a problem where I got a bit of a sex addiction. Okay. So anytime I do a, a drug, my next thing is like, I wonder what it feels like to come on this shit. Like, <laughs> and then I need to fuck. Like, is, you know what? That's a pretty rational thought process. Yeah, it's like it goes yeah. back to caveman. You yeah. know what like I mean? Things like, are feeling good. Yeah. What's, how what can make it feel better? Yeah. Yes. What right. feels the best? Coming and eating pizza. Like, yeah. so like. I'm going to try that this weekend. <laughs> 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 Put a fucking slice on her neck and go for that shit. Um, yeah. So I was like, this is the one of the few drugs that makes me not where I can do it by myself and I don't I don't feel like I have to go fuck somebody yeah cause it kinda numbs you all over and it and it makes you trip balls like you fucking trip visuals feelings were... like I would I would do it and then I would watch documentaries and keep doing it until I was thought I literally thought I was in the documentary oh that's a good drug <laughs> it's not bad <laughs> yeah you're like that's... I'm involved in a pretty big conspiracy right now <laughs> straight up I was like man I was watching one about prostitutes like man my mom's a hooker I got yeah. a half, <laughs> half black trick baby fucking brother that's so fucking funny. what we can do on Easter yeah. like shit is crazy so you just so much that you're in it. Yeah, I've never, I've never done ketamine, uh, but I have had friends that have, and then some. Some of my friends do have done horse tranquilizer. The PCP shit. Is that what that is? Yeah. Because they just called it horse tranquilizer. I was in Colorado. No, so I wait, 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 that's ketamine. Cat, cat tranquilizer is ketamine, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's for like ducks and chickens. Like, is that what like, ketamine's what, for? Like yeah, veterinarians like, get it? Yeah, like baby monkeys. <laughs> like if you got like a like what a, an adorable like if a drug. monkey breaks his leg or some shit. You're like, hold up, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> it's all things that are drawn on a child's crib. Straight like, up, baby yeah. octopus, <laughs> tiny little <laughs> huggable roosters. <laughs> Straight up, yeah. You can nice. get all those things fucked up. <laughs> yeah. You want to snort this shit? <laughs> it's because you're gonna meet Look all at the of them. Little koala bear. Do you want to meet all of them? <laughs> so then now you do snus in order or uh, yeah, snuff. snuff, yeah. Just because cause I really do enjoy snorting shit. Yeah. It's but it just, gives you, it's not a high, is it? It gets like nicotine, you know? Yeah. yeah. Were so, you ever a cigarette smoker? Yeah, but I quit because I, I was going time weights. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, That's I why just I quit, quit, too. I'm at a sweet spot now. Like, I don't want to be like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like this is what we get paid off of, bro. You got to be able to talk. Yeah, yeah, I thought the same thing. I quit smoking four years ago. And it was because I started, like, uh, after weekends of shows. He just, he quit four, three weeks, three months ago? Yeah. Eight, uh, well, eight weeks now, eight almost nine weeks. But when I was smoking, I could feel my voice go quicker because I was smoking. But I Bro. fucking love cigarettes. I'm a, yeah, like, I love smoking. I still the, love it. I still miss it. So every day I want to do it. Still. Yeah, but that stays because I miss it every day. Little, Little Miss Sunshine is kind of a corny fucking movie, but the best shit is the fucking granddad that just turns into a dope fiend like when he's 80. <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, that's what I'm going to do. Oh. I'm going to go straight dope fiend. If I I'm make 80. it to... Oh, I made plenty of ideas about that. I, go, I, I got... I mean, I... I mean, what what people I know who have done heroin have done for heroin. 
Yeah. You're like, it's got to be the shit. It's got to be awesome. It's heard, just got to be I the shit. I haven't heard one negative user review <laughs> of heroin. I also I've know how, like, in the right, I also know how, like, in the right dosage, like, what painkiller does. And whenever I say, I go, oh, yeah, I like the way a painkiller feels. Yeah. Oh, people, a people, good opiate? And then people go, oh, then heroin would be your thing. Yeah. That's I'm why a, I said it. It's like, Coke doesn't bother me. And I'm never in, enticed to try Coke ever because I'm like, I don't want ever a wire. I, I, my life is so, you know, we're constantly yeah. getting to go and fly. and So... To, I want something where it's like the day that I'm home and off, I can go. It's like, man, I'm going to watch seven straight hours of something. Dude, what? anything that is advertised by being 2,000 years ago in China, dudes wearing silk pajamas and just laying around. It's like, that's my drug. That's what <laughs> yeah. I want to do. Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, one of my favorite days was like a bunch of a bunch of painkillers, some Soma, and watching Blood In, Blood Out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the so the so long, so long version. Like, oh, the best. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, so long. The redux. <laughs> <laughs> where it's fucking... Three and a half hours. Benjamin Bratt's finest work. Straight, yeah, this is my favorite thing he's ever done. Is that Little Puppet, right? Is that little? Is that, that one? Uh, that's that's, that's not puppet, a... Big that's puppet's, American Me. Yeah. Big Puppet's got to kill Little Puppet? This is Miklo. This is me. Hey, Cinderella, go find yourself a fella. William Forsyth yeah. is the white dude in it, right? Yeah, there's... Yeah, that's American Me. American Me. That's American Me also? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know Blood and Blood Out. <laughs> but it's not, re- it's not reading like that right now. Did you have a problem coming off ketamine, or was it pretty easy? I get kind of—I don't know. You get kind of—you get kind of dopey for. You're kind of loopy for a, like a week, and then you're good. It's more mental. Yeah, it's more mental because it really takes you off of this world and. People kind of suck. You know, like, <laughs> fuck it. I go out. I try to, like, go get along with people. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, fuck. And I'm in L.A., yeah. too. And I'm like, fuck these people. Oh, because they're like, so how's everything going? My cousin's into ketamine. You should do ketamine with my cousin. <laughs> they're like, white privilege. Yeah. They're like the richest motherfucker. <laughs> I'm like, shut the fuck up, dude. Like, I, were I talking about that to get here, We were man. talking about that yesterday. Like, all the... Dave Smith was was pointing out the Emmys like this big it's like their way of going like help people with the homeless relief and the hurricane it's like their own thing to be like shut up it's just yeah. like yeah like, it's like I, I gotta yeah. watch I gotta yeah I get to watch I, rich people jerk off in front of me I'm just like no dude I'm gonna go and do fucking ketamine yeah that sounds way better getting involved in a documentary I would much rather be abducted by aliens and unacknowledged and hear some rich cunt be like depends what documentary poor people have it hard <laughs> anyways uh, go fuck yourself you're gonna see three commercials I'm in that I'm making sixty grand in that fucking uh, fucking play. I started it's watching that's out there. Yeah. yeah, I started watching the confession tapes on Netflix. That's that's a good one to take something whatever and dive into for sure. What is what it? is the confession tapes? It's a, a whole series documentary about uh, people like giving confessions, they like, get convicted on confessions, that, but like how they get the confessions. Here's the trailer. It's ridiculous. Oh, is it? We have the trailer. I was the first one. They do a thing. Canada, how, many, how many episodes is it? Is this like a know. more depressing first 48 or some shit like that? <laughs> sort of, yeah. A well, a well shot first 48? You're like, sort of don't what? say it. Uh, before well, here's, before you play the trailer, they have a thing that's, I don't know if it's still legal, but they do. In, one of the things takes place, it's like the Can- Canadian-Washington state border. Yeah. And there's a thing in Canada that they can do that's an illegal to do in America. The cops. The cops can do a thing called the Mr. Big scam, and that's where if they want you to confess to, like, end the thing. If, if you're a suspect, right? Yeah, here it is right here. I know, but this what, the Mr. Big. Yeah, it's a – can you enlarge that, Christina? I'll, I'll, right yeah. Someone – it's yeah. A, sometimes known as a Canadian technique. It's a covert uh, investigation procedure used by undercover police to elicit confessions with suspects in cold cases. They basically go and they set somebody up who was a suspect. Yeah. And they go – they get him to confess. They're like, they're like, it's like, hey, you're gonna work for me now, but you gotta fucking come clean everything to me. It's like that shit. It's oh, like, they get him. You wanna yeah. meet the big boss? You That's like meet, entrapment. You wanna, yeah. It's complete entrapment. Yeah. That's all it is. So it's all these. Like, they have teenagers and, and, and adults and people people convicted of a. They told one guy to confess. They were like, he was like a drunk, and they go, uh, we found a hair on on your chick. And like uh, we found, it, but it's your hair. She was holding onto your hair, and then we found a dollar in her pocket that had your blood on it. Now they just did. They just told him that, and he goes, "I swear." So his confession tape is going. 
I must have did it then. I don't know. Like I'm such a piece of junk, and, piece of shit. Uh, and he spent can't... 16 years in jail before they came out and like the DNA. They did the DNA testing. It definitely wasn't his hair, and it oh wasn't any God. his blood on that dollar bill at all. And they let him out. He got convicted of being Canadian. He goes, "Oh, sorry." No, it was. Not I didn't that know was, that happened. That was American. Oh, okay. That would have been great. Because by the way, the Canadian technique does sound like a blowjob maneuver. <laughs> and she gave me the Canadian technique, which was called a Mr. Big Boss. Oh, <laughs> um, let's take a quick break. Uh, and you're going to hang out with us still, right, Jude? Yeah, I'm still. Yeah, because I want to talk about the Kevin Hart stuff when we come back. Yeah, absolutely. Traveling strippers, that's very, very, uh, you can, very You exciting. can get his new book, Hummingbird, available now, Rude Jude hanging out. And then Big J Okerson's going to be on Conan next Wednesday, September 27th. So set your DVRs. He's going to be on panel. It's a big fucking deal. going to be on Conan next Wednesday. And then this weekend, he'll be performing at the Rhode Island Comedy Connection, September 22nd and September 23rd. And then at the Cabot Comedy Club in Chicopee, Mass. on the 24th. Go get tickets at Big jcomedy.com. Dan Soder, going to be at Rumors Comedy Club, Winnipeg, Canada, Thursday, September 28th through Saturday, September 30th. After that, he's going to be in San Diego at the American Comedy Company, October 5th through Saturday, October 7th. Get your tickets at dansoder.com. Awesome. Make sure you check out his half-hour special as part of the stand-ups available right now on Netflix. We'll also, right uh, uh, oh, I'm, uh, Bobby, oh no. Kelly, Bobby Kelly had to bail on uh, his hour next Wednesday at the Fat Black Pussycat, and I know we're on vacation, so I'm taking over. It's going to be me, Tim Dillon, and some other people doing an hour at the Fat Black Pussycat, uh, West Village, New York City. Go to ComedyCellar.com oh, yeah. for tickets. Uh, but, yeah, it's next Wednesday. We'll and make sure we tweet that out, everybody. We'll be right back. It's right. the bonfire. And now, back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. It's real standing out, staring off a of pier music. <laughs> but it's fucking great. The war on drugs. Going to go see him, right, in fucking 30 minutes at Terminal 5 in New York right. City. Oh, for real? Yeah, we're heading from here to there. Kick ass. Yeah, that's why yeah, I brought a little. Band. That's what had me think about life decisions over here. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Get over there. Still, still, still tickets some... available. Come over. Yeah, I'm going to eat some uh, edibles in the hood over there. Man, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to think about life? No, I'm good. It gets dark enough. Jesus Christ. Because <laughs> yeah. maybe I shouldn't let that pile of tires blow me last night. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, yo, yo, after the after after the blowjob, I was like, uh, you don't got no like herpes on your mouth or nothing, dude. She's like, oh no, no, God, no. Do you have anything? I was like, no, nah, I'm good too. But it was like maybe we should have cleared that up first. Should have led with that. I left with my dick tingling, man. I just, you, you know, <laughs> it was your mind though, psychosomatic. Right? Yeah, yeah bro. Into it. Like yeah. if you've been in the thrift store too long, you just start itching. <laughs> it's the same fucking deal. I was like, you close shit. that, please. <laughs> no, dude, I do that in hotels and like shady uh -huh. hotels. I'm saying that. I'm like, why am I itching? Why am I itching? I was in Boise and I was like, I'm fucking itching. And it was fine. Oh, you're going for it. I can respect that. Are you ready? Well, wow. that's. And that's, that'll that'll no. land right when it's time to. Right oh time yeah, to well, I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot one now, fifteen, and then when we leave, and then really? just be how up strong there. are they? GHB, bro. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that shit, if you do it right, that shit's wavy, baby. Wavy <laughs> 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 like, like, than That's my jam. Uh, uh, before we even get well, here, you go. Anthony, New Jersey wants to talk about taking pills and watching things, which just I, I want to take this call. <laughs> yeah. I, I really picture the guy just gonna be like, oh, you ever get fucking whacked and watch? Roadhouse again. He goes, dude, what about reflections off a fish tank on a wall? <laughs> Anthony in Jersey, you there? What's up, Jay? What's up, brother? Crackle, crackle, motherfuckers. Crackle, crackle, dude. You're, 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 yeah. What are your favorite uh, watching things pills? Uh, Rick and Morty. I love watching Narcos. Whatever's on Netflix, too. I think you're just naming good TV. You yeah, what, need pills. what pills, though? Oxys. Oh boy, yeah, buddy, you know, come on! You know another one that I've done that was like it was kind of it was kind of crazy. I watched Wonder Showsen on Ecstasy. Yes, and Wonder Showsen was, was great. Wonder Showsen is a beast, especially yeah. nowadays. Now everyone's a fucking pussy. Like yeah. you couldn't even get away. Remember with when Wonder they, they used to have beat kids? Beat but, kids, beat kids. Yeah. And there was kids as, as old timey you, reporters saying fucking hilarious shit. Are you, have you seen that shit before? No, not uh, a long time. I yeah. it, was, it was a it was MTV two, right? Yeah, like, but it was yeah. a way ahead of its time. Yeah, it was way fun. ahead of its time. It was a sketch uh, show. Yeah, air between oh five and oh six. That was only oh five to oh six. Yeah, bro. It didn't. Yeah, it didn't take. It was, it was fucking was, great. And that yeah. was good on what pill? I did it on ecstasy. And it was pretty oh, dark, but it was still good. Like, yeah. I was like, well, the ecstasy kept you up. 
Yeah. And yeah, it like, made you happy through yeah, all the darkness. I was yeah. watching the darkness, and yeah. then, like, there was one between numbers and letters that were fighting, and they supposed to be the Jews in Palestine. But I, I, gotta try, I gotta try Molly. And they blow it up, and then they eat God's rib. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I remember that. That was a good episode. By the way, you never did Molly? Why you guys have to tell me, I, I gotta do Molly. I looked at Christine, and Christine just went like, no, you know, I'm probably gonna do Molly. You've never done it? No. Uh, I did. Is Molly's different than MDMA, right? This no. is uh, Mo, Yo, you need to just, I did ecstasy the one time, and I just, like. The press pill shit? It was a pill. Yeah. And I took it, and I was like, I don't know. It just didn't, like, do anything, like, crazy. Were well, you on, uh, like, antidepressants or anything like that? Oh, maybe. That shit, it fucks with that. It doesn't work. I may have been on Lexapro at that time. Yeah, it does, yeah. Ari gave oh. it. I did it for the first time two summers. Last summer? Two summers ago with Ari at Bonnaroo. And mm-hmm. It was gorgeous. I had Lovely. a great time. Be like, man, I'm so happy we went oh, here together, man. God I was just, damn man, it. fuck. I was talking to painkillers. Like, painkillers do work on man, me, for sure. listen to John Mayer right now, yeah. man. It was fuck. LCD sound system, so I was like, oh. Oh, bro, that's dope. Oh. It was the first time I really... Ex- we, like, experienced them, and I was like, this is incredible. And they kept bringing us cold bottles of water, so I was like, Duh, I think this is the pinnacle of my life right now. <laughs> it probably was, too. That's the yeah. fucking good. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I got to try it, I guess. Oh, it was great. Look at Kevin Hart's poor family. So you talked about this yesterday with Dave, Jay, but you were talking about Kevin Hart's uh, cheating problems. Uh, this uh, A woman came forward. What would you do, blackmail him? Do you so know the details? It seems like a girl was, uh, I mean, as much as, you know, anybody else knows, I was, uh, no, not privy to anything inside on that, but I mean, uh, I said I was going to text him, like, call, but then I was like, he's got to go oh, through so know. many fucking people to possibly he call. Go, bro. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Yeah. Hey, he'd he'd actually probably appreciate you telling him not to call. When you see him in a year and like, hey, man, I was going to tell you to call. Sorry, but he'd be like, oh, thanks, man. There's just no point. Yeah. And that's like, everything he's got to be so calculated now, but I don't, here's the whole thing. that you have to feel towards this woman. As a man being blackmailed, because you knew she was in on it the whole time, because the reason we bring this up today is Lou Tu found an article where it says that she's a traveling stripper. So this is like a snake oil salesman back in the day. This is what oh. they do. They trap you. It's like Michael Jackson and Paul McCartney, the Say, Say, Say video. Well, yeah. Shysters. <laughs> I, had a, I had a dude call up to the show he was talking about. It. He said he knew this chick from back in the day, and like that was kind of her deal. Like She, she would just fuck dudes and be like, I'm going to tell your girl? Well, not just – she just – she was like a high-class – Go around and fuck rich motherfuckers. That was kind of a, that was kind of a deal. And, and she wanted money from him. You know what? I I slowly I think like, the older I get is I the more I respect when people have a target like that. Like when she's fucking just rich dudes because she could be out there fucking you know broke motherfuckers yeah. with a mixtape. Yeah, she's, but she's really she's really going like that guy that Vecchione and I you were gone, but we were shitting on this guy that this personal trainer at our gym in our neighborhood, and he only works out the hottest girls in the world. Yeah. Every time I see that guy in the gym, this little. Asian dude, I'm like, he's going to be working out a smoke show. And he is. And at first I'm like, you fucking creepy fuck. But then I'm like, you know what? Good for you. You You kind of made it your thing at this gym to train the hot girls. Kevin Hart really got lucky that uh, this came out through blackmail because people hate blackmail more than cheating. Well, that's what, yeah, uh, right, Letterman that's, got around that. Yeah. Wonderfully. Yeah, you cheat, yeah. and then someone threatens blackmail, and then you expose the blackmail, you look like the hero. Well, yeah. you get to come out, and we did it. He's like, like, we all make mistakes, but this person's a criminal. <laughs> look, <laughs> here's the deal. A gang of motherfuckers cheat. Not everybody blackmails. You know what sure. I mean? You can, relate, you can relate to having temptations. You can't yeah. relate to, like, almost oh, set this motherfucker up. Yeah. And then uh, say he's gay, like they did the tranny did to the other R&B motherfucker. Uh, I don't Who, know. uh... No, nah, the, the, bro, it's just, yo, all these R&B, uh, these brothers are getting fucking just destroyed this year. You know the one I'm talking about? Bobby Valentino. Bobby Valentino. Yeah, yeah. Well, he got with a, 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 a oh, he, she? She was chasing him out the room, man. Like, oh, with a with a fucking phone? With the camera phone. Like, where's my money, Bobby? Yeah. And it was a tranny? Yeah, bro, yeah. Uh, and, 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 there's no deniability. That was a fucking, it looked like Juana Man was chasing his ass. <laughs> so fucking funny. That's so fucking funny. Yeah. Are you trying to get back into the NBA or get my money? Well, here's I don't what I talked about. That's why, that's why I said yesterday, it kind of goes. Juana Man. It goes with Kev as much as it goes with what I said. Like, because Dave Smith said yesterday how Donald Trump is the most hated president of all time. He's like the most hated figure yeah. of all, like, in American history, like, most hated figure. And it's because, I believe, it's because of, like, the transparency, man. You just see everything about everybody now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You you couldn't, you know what I mean? Even in George Bush's time, you couldn't see everything about him. 
And then you, by the end, you could. But it's now it's like it's so, I mean, hackers and WikiLeaks and all this shit is nonstop. Man. And the other thing is, like, uh, he is not, uh, Trump has not ingratiated himself with the press. So not at all. Anything he does, it's like, yo, we, they blowing foghorns on his ass. Oh, of course. But, but I mean, <laughs> but Kev's whole thing is like, what is Kev like? I said to Christine the other day, and she, she didn't necessarily agree with me. I go, it's not Kev's job to be a fucking role model. Not at all. He's Charles Barkley territory. Right? Like, I use the same exact example, Charles Barkley. I'm not raising your own fucking kids. But, and I, I agree with you, uh, but I, I think that, you know, someone called up on my show today, and they was like, he wrote a book about being faithful to his girl, Blase Splee. I'm like, yo, honestly, like, if you start, if you looking at Ellen DeGeneres and Oprah and fucking all these happy chipper motherfuckers, like, <laughs> they're your role models, like, you the dumb motherfucker, man, because yeah. they all lying. Ain't nobody that happy. No, yeah. and they got dark shit they've done oh, or dude. did. Well, it's also like, yeah, it, the happiest motherfuckers are getting, like, having some pain for someone to shit on their foot and then kick exactly. them with it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dude, dude, I can't Which imagine cool. the shit that, like, Dr. <laughs> Phil's into and all those people who are telling people how to live their life. You know like what I'm the, saying? From that angle of, like, you're not doing it right. What I like to do is I lay in a bathtub and I have 14 Asian teenagers piss all over me. Yeah, but all it takes is one of them just coming forward and being like, oh, uh, hey, like, when you walk, when they walk out of that room, like, hey, that was a really fun piss sesh we just had. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm going to go talk to the press. And then you're yeah. like, oh, fuck. Like, fine, great. Yeah. Well, eventually you're going to bump into the not that cool one. I'm going to tell him about our duck sauce bath. Fuck it, though, man. Like, you know, and I said Kev did, I guess, what he could do as far as, like, owning the whole thing, like, coming up. But it's, like, it's such, with such an air of apology that I'm just, Fuck like, apologizing, I'm like, what are you apologizing? You don't have to owe me fucking shit. I mean, I'm always, uh, I'm always impressed when someone doesn't apologize and three weeks later is just back in it like nothing happened. I think I think when you apologize, it shows weakness, and then everybody jumps on with their fucking opinion. And if you're like, "Fuck you, yeah, I did. It's not your business. Suck my dick. Fuck off." I gotta Stonewall, go deal with Stonewall. Stonewall. Yeah, I gotta go deal with my wife. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm I'll gonna deal, deal with, with my wife. You deal with your wife. How about that? Yeah. So who is this? You deal woman? with your husband, who's who's not happy with your fucking <laughs> yeah. whack ass pussy. Yeah. He yeah, he's cheating on you with some big fat yeah. pig that works at a piggly wiggly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting your yeah. He's getting Kev's he cheating with high level ass. Yeah, he's least. getting so he's getting a fucking Nine out of ten, you're getting a bag lady from a grocery store. You're like, yeah, you want to go out to the Toyota and blow me real quick before I go home to my mother? Fucking Dominican car wash manager. <laughs> Straight up, bro. Yep, you're, yeah, your wife is sucking Monica. the manager of fucking Applebee's. Dick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Worry yeah. about that. Bro. And not even bringing home appetizers. No, yeah, not even, you don't even get the fucking lava cake. Yeah, at least if it was a TGI Fridays, you can get endless apps. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, it was a bag of apps we yeah, like that guy could really fucking put it down. Are you taking a picture of her as a baby, Lou? No, nah, no, nah, this is one of my best friends right here. Oh, really? Yeah, she writes for them. Yeah. She writes for heavy.com, yeah. and it says that her name's Monita, Monita Sabah. The bag? That's the name of the girl. That's the name of the girl that uh, is blackmailing Kevin Hart. You know what, man? These motherfuckers just need to start fucking more wholesome girls. It just takes a little bit more game. Just yeah. A, a, just a squidget more. Just a poor oh. Keto more game. I don't understand why they fucking with these, like, cum dumpsters, man. <laughs> you know, like, you know this bitch ain't no you good. You can certainly fucking... find a young girl who's willing to stay in the pocket. Of, what, of think, what, you, what you want her to be. You don't think there's a 24, 22 year old Florida State student that that's a, probably a fucking 10 that would love to fuck Kevin Hart if he totally. took her on a jet to Paris? Totally. And then she's like, oh day. my God, I'd fuck. No, but friends, that's point, but that age, something there. that age may fuck it up, but somewhere between 25 and early 30s, there's a girl that would definitely be like, oh yeah, this will be fun for a while. Bro, so, I'll get a single, I'll keep like, my mouth shut. I'll I'm, get some money. Mm -hmm. like, like, he'll buy stuff for me, I'm sure, and hook me up for a bit. This is what I'll do. I mean, Kev's got, like, got like, I'll buy you car yeah. tomorrow money. Dude, like, does I, it fucking, not, not a wink. Grab up a badass single mom, bang that shit out, send a kid to the grandparents' house every every few weekends and shit. Yeah. <laughs> She'll shut the fuck up. Everyone's happy. Oh, <laughs> get her a fucking jacuzzi at her house. Yeah, yeah, kids gonna be good. Jordans for every day. Like yeah. the kids these so things that are just blips of his money. Like he's like he wouldn't even think twice. About yeah, it. yeah, bro, that's mailbox money. It's <sighs> nothing. But you, but then you come and you're like, hey, remember we. Uh, apparently giggled laying on a couch together. Now everyone knows we giggled on a couch together. <laughs> like, is that why? I won fifteen million dollars. Is that how much she asked for? Yeah, she asked for fifteen million. She's wow. Claiming that she's not the extortionist, and it just says that it was an eight-figure extortion deal. But then also that the video uh, they tried to sell it 
t- for fifteen million dollars before trying what's to blackmail the video? Kevin Hart. What is the video? They don't say what's actually on the video. It's just that it's like sexually suggestive. It was just suggestive. That's, that's like, lame. Is that's if really I saw lame sexually shit. suggestive on an HBO rating, I'd be like, boo! I, I want know. heavy adult content. You know, I love about movies. Know. Movies are documentaries that touch on like that press thing, though, like that. Like it's yeah. so funny like, when the asshole comes in and goes. I got Kevin Hart being sexually suggestive with a girl. Like, I want fifteen million. They go fuck off. And by the time it gets down, they go, "I'll give you twenty grand and a fucking Uber ride back to your, you know, your shitty apartment." Okay. Well, she, like, they don't know. She said she would hook up to a lie detector for four hundred and twenty thousand. For what? Who cares? No one gives I don't a fuck care. Anymore. She's lying. I know she's lying. She does this as a job, bro. I'm gonna be real. Just as like a cynical civilian, I just figure everybody, not you two guys, because you guys are real nice. But I figure <laughs> every mother. Fucker that's out on tour on stage is getting their dick wet. Like, yo, dude, like that's that's kind of the deal. I think lower level comedy, it's not like lower level music. I think lower level music it is. I think lower level comedy, you're more like, eh, eh? you know? Yeah. It's not really No, that's not true. It's it's uh, very much that's that's the beauty of when you first start a comedy is you can't believe like after shows, like I was like, oh wow, like a girl's but not like, consistently. Of course, not consistently, but I mean, like it's that's it's part of the end of the night. It'd be kind of fun, like, oh, isn't that kind of fun? If there's some chicks to the show, and you go try to talk. I mean, that's like, yeah. t- I mean, I'm not even saying you. I'm saying like just in general, like it's a lot. How many comics I've told to stop doing comedy because I'm like, oh, you're just like a doing it for pussy. You'll never be funny. Is the problem? Yeah. If your only motivation is doing it is for pussy, you'll never be like so a yeah. really. You'll never be a great comic. You, you know, do, like, comics okay. that. We're in it for the pussy. Absolutely. Yeah. That's crazy. crazy. Yeah, where they're just kind of like, oh, it's like, well, it's so much so that they would never do self deprecating comedy. They, I, they, they, all their what? comedy is, all their comedy is like outward you just said that. shittiness, and you're like, you're like, well, no one's going to relate to that anyway. You just yeah. said that, and three names popped into my head immediately where I'm like, the new comedy more, the new comedy more. But he was that, it was that kind of comedy where they're like, yeah. Well, anyways, what's up with these assholes? Well, same thing if you go there and your comedy's like, uh, unless you're like doing like a dice ish character or something, mm-hmm. if you go up there and you go, it's like, oh, you ever see? You ever get your dick sucked by a big fat pig? <laughs> you're like, who, who's? What crowd's gonna get behind you on that? Yeah. It's like you're 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 talking, you're bragging about getting your dick sucked, and you're calling the girl who did it like a big. It's like everything's like so. Yeah. So the only person laughing at you is like an asshole who's gonna bootleg your shit anyway. He's not even gonna buy it. So the girl that did it's 27. Wait, go back. It said it met Kevin during a pretty wild weekend in Vegas. Man, that's their nest, huh? Mm-hmm. Las Vegas. They just wait for those pool parties. And then just fucking throw their town. I went to that one at the Palms. I was so uncomfortable. I mean, also because I was probably wearing a sweatshirt. <laughs> so I didn't want to take my shirt off at the pool. Yeah. Well, you just I'm in a t-shirt. t-shirt guy. Oh, yeah. oh, you're not fooling anyone. Dude, I swear to you, just for the laughs. I get sunburned. I swear yeah. to you for the laughs. If we're ever all out in Vegas together, I'll go in the Palms pool with a t- I don't swim with a t-shirt on, but yeah. I will do that. I'll be that guy. Because yeah. all that's around is porn star pussy all around the... the the pool and it'll just be me and a thing like water's great everybody <laughs> yeah. what's that guy doing in the deep end <laughs> flip. did he fall did, I'm just yeah. doing flips did he fall in in his clothes I like to do flips and see and, and feel like, like light as air I really hate that these guys are like such cliches man like there's there's fucking bad chicks all over the place yeah. and then they go to fucking Vegas to trick off with Cheap strippers. Like this. By the way, like, like, like ch- everywhere. And you're also him. you're asking for chicks who are gonna try to like fuck you over. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're not. You're not gonna meet a girl who's like, no, I'm cool with the program. No, in I, Vegas. I don't run game on motherfuckers for a fucking living in <laughs> Vegas. Give, like, a small. Yeah, if you give like a small town chick very minimal. Yeah. She'll be so appreciative. Kevin, go to Indianapolis. Haven't you seen Casino, bro? Like, there's a whole movie about this shit. I'll pay like, your... She knows the bellman if she's leaving. She goes, bye, Morty. And you're like, how do you know that guy? Dude, Kev can pay her rent for a year. <laughs> and by the way, just for one nut. Just for one nut. One nut, he goes, by the way, I have to carry your condo till 2019. It's <laughs> almost my point with a sexually suggestive video. If you came to Kev and were like, I mean, like, why don't you come in and like... Give me $500,000, I'll walk away on this. That's a light, that's a game changer for the extortionist. Well, the thing is, is I think if he gave it to them, you know, they're just, yeah. once that 500 grand is gone, they're going to be knocking at the door again. Um, yeah. Kevin, it just turns out that I have another video that I have, and I'm going to need another 500000 I had three iPhones. <laughs> yeah. I, so, thought, I had a GoPro. There's no point in, in trying to defend, like, a video or making a big deal about a video because they go away. <laughs> they go away. Jay-Z, I, I only got reminded by a 
Family Guy joke the other day that Jay Z and the you know Solange and oh, in the elevator right? and all that yeah. shit in the elevator. I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah, that whole thing. But Jay Z got he's had an album come out since. It's like oh, he just headlined the Meadows this they weekend. They both made millions of dollars off of that fucking of like the lemonade yeah, the girl, and him talking like with his fucking fake sadness about it. And, <laughs> and you know the girl that tried to extort him on that was like, all right, Jay, well I'm gonna tell Beyonce, and then he told her he's like, oh by the way, Beyonce's gonna win a Grammy because you fucking were gonna extort us. So now we're super famous. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Such angry, such angry music, though. Um, well, you know. Kev's lucky none of his girlfriends can rap. <laughs> <laughs> what can, what is, and look, man, his new girl was, wasn't she the OG side piece? Well, that's what the other uh, problem what is. signing up for. But that's my whole problem is like, what, I think yeah, that who was do you a, think takes your place? That was a weird move, though, on the part of like, her. Like, what it was is she put out a tweet saying, like, how many years her and Kev have been together. It's like, oh, we've been together X many years. Very publicly, when then someone came back and was like, oh, you know, he hasn't been divorced that long. <laughs> and she was like, oh, come on, you know, eight there was years a bunch to, of girls. It said, yeah, it said eight years together, one married, forever to go. Yeah. So she's like, you know, him and Tori have only been divorced for six years. And it's just like, that was just kind of a dumb thing on her part, too. But when they came back at her, instead of just going like, oh, I, I meant whatever. Just trying to run interference or take it down. She just goes like, I'm sure Tori's not retarded and understands whatever the dynamic is. But to put it out in the press like that, for her to say it publicly, and then for it to come. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, she said, and then when it came back to her, like, that timeline seems weird. Her reaction's almost like, well, he fucked a bunch of girls while they were married. Who cares? It's like, well, yeah. don't do that either. What yeah. are you doing? Don't throw gas on the fire. <laughs> yeah. She goes, I was like the seventh girl he had fucked. I mean, it's literally what she's, like, saying. And you're like, don't fucking say that either. And to be real, man, him and his new chick might have an understanding that we don't know about, dog. Another like, thing while all that, like, transparency sucks because all you see is the thing. You don't know what their deal is. Yeah. She might be like, fuck whoever you want. She could be like, oh, this extortion thing. She's like, does she know that I don't care? She's like, I'm married to Kevin Hart. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, right man. Yeah. I sleep on a gold bed. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. It's gilded. Yeah. <laughs> don't you, don't it's, you, gilded. it's real gold. It's not bullshit. My paint. sleep pattern is 52. It's fucking <laughs> crushing. <laughs> I've had, that might be why it's strippers. Yeah. A lot of comics... Myself included, not my, I didn't have a great offer, but like a lot of companies have had a thing where a guy asked you to fuck their chick. Ah, right, dude, I told you that story where, the, where I was in. <laughs> I've uh, had guys ask me. I've I was had, in, I've, had, I've, had, I've had it several times. A I was guy in asked me DC to fuck their chick or wants me or says I can or something like that. I did the shows in DC and uh, I was still drinking. And after the show, I'm drinking and this fucking this girl is smoking hot. But I'm her boyfriend. She's not there yet. Her yes, to you, you were hammered. Uh, but dude, her boyfriend. You want to come upstairs? Let me. <laughs> let me get, get, get your penis. Get over. I'm talking to her boyfriend. I think I've told the story before. We were talking. I remember specifically what we were talking about. We were talking about the Seahawks-Falcons playoff game. And I'm like, I don't know, man. I think the Falcons got a shot. And this guy's like so nice. He's like, yeah, man. It was a great show. It was a great night. And her, she, this girl comes over and puts her arms around both of us. And she's in the middle. And she's like, baby. Can, she goes, where are you staying? I go, I'm at the Marriott, like down the street. It's not that bad of a hotel. And she goes, baby, can we go to his <laughs> hotel and he can fuck me in front of you? And the guy's like, no, whoa. And I'm like, no, I don't know about that. <laughs> and then as she says, he goes, I'm sorry, man. To me, he goes, I'm sorry. I'm like, no, I'm sorry. I don't know what the fuck's going on. And the second she walks away, she just eats shit in her high heels. Just like three steps, like, and then, punk, and you're like, oh, boy, that's going to be an awkward conversation in the morning. But they're having breakfast where he's like, I've had weird, like, but I've just had, like, I've had two soccer moms who were, like, on, vac like, you know, a girl's weekend away together, yeah. like, I fucked one while the other one was, like, there. So, you know what I mean? Like, weird shit. On the phone with her kids. She goes, no, nah, make sure you bring up the orange I'm just, I'm just saying, everyone's in the weird shit. It is really. Yeah, you know, and that's, I, I'm sure you guys can recur. I'm, like, known as the scumbag, so I got, I got, like, a lot of moms sliding into my DMs. Yeah. And then I look at the pictures, and it's, like, the very, the first picture is, like, <laughs> the dad holding the baby, and they're all fucking, there's a tire swing and shit. And I'm, like, it's, <laughs> Give me that J.C. Penny shot, bro. It breaks my heart. I'm like, God damn, the dude. Thing where, like, his, where is his hands on the wife's shoulder, and she's like this. Yeah. Yeah. She goes, and then the picture captions like, "Loving ourselves and the Lord Jesus for five years." And the DMs like, "I want you to turn me into the swamp thing." You, de yeah, it's in. Everyone's into weird shit. Yeah, let's just get over it. Let's just get over it and accept it. And in the right circumstance, everyone would cheat. And under the right, I mean, like it's everyone. Anyone? We think yeah. my stepfather used to like pound it into my brain for some reason. He goes under the right circumstance, 
under the right circumstance, anybody is capable of almost anything. Under yeah. the right circumstance. Yeah. Right? So you can't say you'll never cheat. It's like, I don't know, man. What if just like, ah, this is so no harm, no foul, whatever. You know what yeah. I mean? like, kills me are fucking the lames that judge somebody else's family. It's like, don't even worry about, don't worry about what the fuck Kevin Hart's I think that's doing. why we're but in people such will. a shitstorm. People will kill. I, people but I care. I think that's why we're in such a shitstorm right now in our cultures because everyone's in other people's business. Yeah, and they're not, yeah. they're not minding their own business as far as like, what do you do? What are you doing to make shit? better that's like, too it's too hard that's too hard because it you know what it does is then they're like mm, mm, but my neighbor's fucking her friend and you're like why is that your business why well, is that your business because well, you know that that's your business one of the videos i saw was a big thing it was like why do you think kevin hart put that big like harvey relief thing together it was just to sort of distract you from all like, this well he no. still gave a fuck hundred thousand dollars to mm-hmm. hurricane really i'm like i don't know it's so weird man but before it's we the, get out before we get out of here so it's time to go buddy oh boy um we want to say, first of all, that Rude Jude's new book, Hummingbird, available yeah. now. Make sure you check that out. I Audible, too, bro. Uh, huh? It's on Audible. If you, if Do you, you read it? Got, yeah, it's me reading. That's great. Check it out on Audible, and then go get it so we can get in that New York Times bestseller list. I would love. Yo, let's do it for the motherfuckers that ain't going to college, y'all. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. man. Come on, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. Let's, do it let's fucking do it. And again, set your DVRs. Big J is going to be on Conan next Wednesday, September 27th. And then uh, this weekend, he's going to be at the Rhode Island Comedy Connection, the 22nd and 23rd of September. And then the Cabot Comedy Club in Chicopee, Mass. on the 24th. Go get tickets at BigJComedy.com. Dan Soder going to be in Winnipeg, Canada, uh, September 28th at Rumors Comedy Club, September 28th through September 30th. Christine, while I bring this up, can you bring up the remix of Kevin Hart's Apology? It is one of the funniest videos to me. Uh, and we'll play it on our way out here. Make sure um, you after go that, to... you can go to San Diego as a seed dance. The American Comedy Company, Thursday, October 5th through Saturday, October 7th. Get tickets for all Dan shows and go see them live. Get your tickets at dansoder.com. And don't forget uh, our special next Wednesday, Fat Black Pussycat, 8.30 p.m. I'm doing an hour. Yes. So, so if you're in New York. That's all right. You, Tim Dillon, and who? Uh, I'm going to have some surprise guests. All right. That's going to be a fun one. ComedyCellar.com for tickets. Very fun. Turn off the music for a second. Let it play. This is so funny to me. Get on my back. And because of that, I should make smart decisions. And recently, I didn't. You know, I'm not perfect. Um, and I just, you know, it's, it's a shitty moment. And there's no excuses for it. I just simply got to do better. You know, I'm not perfect. I just simply got to do better. Do better. No, um, go to apologize. Do better. do better. Go to apologize. The one on the side there. I just simply got to do better. Apologize. 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 your knees. Oh, my perfect. We'll catch you guys tomorrow at the bonfire. Peace.